I used during that year that I started to work as a common laborer, I went to work, I passed and I saw these guys standing working on hardwood floors. And you know, I can do that. So I went and I talked to the foreman. And he said, yeah, I can give you a job, but you're going to have to join the union. And I said, that's no problem, because I tried to get into the union before, into the carpenters' union before, but they had the saying, it wasn't a saying, it was a rule, that we can take you into the union if you got a job. The employer said, we will give you a job if you belong to the union. You want to catch 22. There's no way that a black kid was going to get to be an apprentice. I took the job as a as a, a an apprentice hardwood floor layer. This was in 19 1949, I think it was. I might kind of get mixed up because I am it was 49 on on dates. Seemed like it was 1949. I had been married in 1947. It was 1949. The Hayward that was closest to where, where we live, we lived in what is now Union City, California. That's where my family located when they came to California. And I was at home in the closest local union. United Brotherhood Local Union, which I had to join, was in Haywood, California. House booming was, housing was really booming at that particular time. I went to the local union and said, I want to join. And they had no problem whatsoever saying that we can't take you into the union, we can take you in on a permit but we can't, you can't join the union because you're colored. And we don't take colored into this union. That's the way things were in 1949 as far as I was concerned. I went back and told my boss, a fellow by the name of Ed Gladwin, and I told my boss, Mr. Gladwin of course, that uh, I went to join the union as you told me to, and he said, they told me that they couldn't take me into the union because I was colored. And he said, well, I'll be damned. Still going on. I said, yeah, still going on as far as I'm concerned. So he said, here's what you do. He said, you go to Oakland, on, to 23rd and Valdez in Oakland, and you talk to the business agent of the local union, Hardwood Floor Layers Local Union, which was 1861. It was 1861, and tell him that if he don't take you into the union, I'm going to file an injunction against the union. I don't know if he could have done that or not at that day and age. I have no idea. But he had been friends with the business agent of 1861. They had been apprentices together in San Francisco back years before. The fellow's name that was business agent, I never will forget it. His name was Harry Grady. The office was on 23rd and Valdez in Oakland. I went in and I said, Mr. Grady, I said, Mr. Gladwin told me to come and talk to you and you're supposed to take me into the union and if you don't take me into the union, he's going to file an injunction against you. And then a lot of expertise from Harry Grady, you know, because they were friends, they knew each other. And so what Harry did, what Harry did, he took me and my brother and he said, we're going to inaugurate you into the union, but it was done in the office of the president. I was not brought on the floor of the local union because they knew that I would be denied membership, so it was done in the office of the union, of the president. I went into the meeting of the local union. The meeting was the same evening that I was inaugurated. The president said, well, we have two new members, two new brothers 
that's putting their membership in 1861. And I want them to stand so you guys can see who they are. We stood and you should have heard the monk murmurs. It was, it was horrible. I was interested in, in organized labor. I was very interested in organized labor. I kind of cry about this now. That was the way that, the way that we were treated. Excuse me. I sit on a row of seats in the meeting hall. Not a member would sit on the row of seats behind me, nor would one sit on the row of seats in front of me. My brother, my brother said, I don't have to take this, I'm not going back, I'm a, I'm a union member now, all I got to do is to pay my dues, I don't have to go to the meetings. I said, I'm going to go because I want to see what's going on. I said, I'm entitled to go to the meetings, and I went through this. I went through this by myself, the only, as I said, I was colored in those days, the only colored man in the union, in the meeting, was me. They made jokes about my family. They made jokes about me. It was horrible. It was completely horrible. It was it was unconscionable for what I what, what I went through just to become a, a brother, a member in the brotherhood. I went through this, and finally, some of the fellows that I was working with began to come around and say, "Hey, it ain't nothing." I guess they said to themselves, "There's nothing wrong with this guy. This guy is a hardworking man." I did my job. I was always on time. And I always stayed until quitting time. My boss, Ed Gladwin, was very fond of me. And he said, when we finish this project, will you come to work with me in Palo Alto? And I told him, yeah. I said, because I need a job. 